that beautiful uh, sci-fi shit. <laughs> Enemy, I will say that it's definitely uh, the spider at the end. Helen? Helen? I was trying to convey a, a sensation. Massive inner terror. It's uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's character finally facing his inner self and, and there's something about the way that shot was designed and done that I'm still uh, uh, deeply in love today. The idea is that uh, we didn't have a lot of budget and it was not a, we didn't have the budget and the technology was not advanced enough to create that spider. So the way uh, it was made is that uh, the guy had created a mock-up, a tiny mock-up of the room in, in, uh, in green screen, tiny replica and put a real tarantula with the high res cameras and then the tarantula was blown up and put in the real room and that for me is one of the best special effects I've seen in my life because you feel it's real that, and that's why I think that uh, so many times insulted because people were, were very angry at me because they were too afraid of, but it's a powerful shot yeah There's a shot that uh, I did, and it was like a very strong instinct to do that shot. A shot that was uh, designed on set that still today is a shot that uh, I feel is well, absolutely the, the right shot to do, uh, to express what I wanted to say. But it's a very simple shot. As There's a moment where we're stepping away from the characters at the beginning of the film. It's like a, a shot that expresses a pressure uh, of time and that want to bring the idea that something ominous is about to happen. It's like a dolly that moves toward the bark of a tree. And it's like that pressure on the bark, that pushing on trees is one of my favorite shots of, of uh, prisoners. I remember when we were doing it with Roger uh, Deakins, uh, Roger and I had thought that it would be nice to see Josh Brolin and uh, Benicio Del Toro squad as the Delta Force are going into the night and how to convey the idea that they were going in the underworld and that they will leave reality and go in a zone of danger and they will be beyond law and 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 uh, they, they will do something that is illegal and the idea that it was to embrace the sky and have the character diving in pure darkness it's a dolly shot that moves slowly and we pan in the same time and as the platoon is going into the shadow they are like silhouettes going into the dark and so on and that i thought was pretty cinematic yeah. In Arrival, I think one of my favorite shots is when uh, Amy Adams needs some kind of relief after having a strange experience uh, in the tent as she's studying the language. She has a, she starts to have like some kind of weird effect coming out of uh, learning that language. And she goes outside and it's a shot, very naturalistic shot where we are close up on her as she's like uh, trying to catch up her breath and, and calm down. And the, you just see the silhouette of the, the ship out of focus behind. And that's a beautiful uh, sci-fi shit. <laughs> it's a, there was something about the old movies encapsulated in that moment where you have that woman being uh, absorbed with emotions that she cannot process as you have in the same time, the surrealism of a, of a ship behind, which feels like a bit like those nightmares where you feel a presence, that tension I was looking for. There's a shot right at the beginning of the movie where we are just above Ryan Gosling's shoulder where he's sleeping in the spinner. The intimacy of the shot, the idea that came from the book, uh, Do Android Dreams About Electric Sheep, to see that cup that is a replicant sleeping at the beginning as he is on a, the journey as he's heading toward violence. That shot and right the shot after of his hand being still uh, and of a, a sleeping being that I thought was 
absolutely moving for me to shoot. For a film like Blade Runner, a lot of people pick out the big landscapes, the colorful mm. shots and the silhouettes. But why do you feel like you connect with those smaller, intimate shots? Because there's so much humanity uh, in, in these shots and intimacy that uh, I was uh, looking for that I feel that uh, right at the beginning I have a, a window. There's nothing more vulnerable than to being asleep and to be close to the, the a sleeping character like that. I felt that uh, I immediately connect with him. Uh, in the most uh, uh, simple way. There's a shot that I'm really fond of. We see his first footsteps in the desert. Time becomes still. I try to create it as it was like the first footstep of the man on the moon or something. It's uh, the idea that a character will suddenly immerse himself in a new, new dimension and stepping into the unknown and to feel the compression of time in that moment where you just follow one footstep after the other the camera is just at the at the uh, just above the sand and then you you see him kneeling in, in the sand and grabbing a scoop of, of sand in his hand there's something so honest about foot and hands and the, the way it's like it's the it's absolutely pure i love shots of hands for that it's like there's something is there, there you cannot lie it's like a direct relationship with reality the action and reality conveyed by the hands uh, i love there's a shot where paul finally rise on the worm it's a shot that we uh, see his foot and finally he stand up, uh, uh, he find his balance on the worm for the very first time. It's a bit like uh, where he becomes a Fremen, where he becomes an adult. barely described in the book and I had to imagine the technique how he will be physically able to jump on a worm making that look real dangerous edgy possible to do that it required a, a tremendous amount of time and research and de development and, and it was by far the most complex sequence I ever done uh, in my life I will be reluctant to dive too much into the technicality of it because I love to keep the magic. So I will say to you, I try to cast not too much of a big sandworm in order to make sure that it will not be too dangerous for uh, Timothy. <laughs> <laughs> Seven Samurai, Kurosawa, uh, Samurai is waiting, sitting at the bottom of a tree. He knows that thieves are coming his way and he's looking at flowers. The way he's sitting and looking at flowers and that precise moment, for me still today is one of the most beautiful scenes I've ever seen that absolutely had a tremendous impact on me. That will be that shot of the Samurai sitting among flowers, but stillness as imminent danger is coming towards him. For more directors picking some favourite shots from their films, why not check out our videos with Ridley Scott or Damien Chazelle?